Welcome everyone. So glad to be here today with you. We are on another Facebook Live. This is the last one of this series, this time anyway, for the uh, on the power surrender. I know about you. I've had a great time, you know, sharing with you about this, and I'm sure I'll continue to talk about it uh, going forward in, in various ways. Um, but today, today is the last time as part of this series of the Power Surrender, and uh, culminating also in a retreat later this week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I know some people have been asking, but Daniel, I have a commitment on Thursday, or Daniel, I have a commitment. Uh, part of those three days. Uh, can I attend? Uh, should I even think about attending? Uh, I think the answer is yes, you can attend, even if you can't make all three days, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday this week. And I will say that you will have a replay and I'll also say it's up to you and your guidance. What is your truth? Again, it always comes back to, are you living your truth? Are you going to live your truth, right? <laughs> Will you live your truth? So bottom line. All right. So that's what uh, I just wanted to mention that, that we have that coming up. And I'm going to put in the link um, right away on that again, uh, if I can. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Awesome. So check that out. Uh, registration is still open for now. It's possible we may close it down right before the retreat just because sometimes it's chaotic trying to manage people into the retreat um, if it's right at the very, very last second. So check it out and see what your guidance is telling you about joining us or not. I know it's going to be amazing, by the way. Um, it is going to bring you into the greatest thing of all. It's going to bring you into that energy and have you more embodied in that and deepen your awakening and deepen your clarity and major breakthroughs are going to happen. I know it. And I uh, look forward to those that are attending. Um, yes. All right. Thank you. All right. So, um, yeah, today I just wanted to kind of wrap it all up by just pointing into, uh, you know, deeper into what I would call just what's the greatest thing of all. You know, a lot of times we're, our mind is uh, so fascinated by what it can do and what what it seems like it can manifest um, as well. Like, okay, I want some apples today. Wow, I focused on it. I got it. Wow. I'm, uh, all right, now what else can we do? I want a, I want a car. Whoa, whoa, my God, I got a car too. Well, let's see if I can manifest a house. Wow, it's a little harder. Wow, if you really focus it, do that vision board. Oh, bring in the high vibe. And uh, we detail what we want. Ah, oh, still not working. Ah, oh, just forget about it. Whoa, all of a sudden that happens, right? So that that's like those things happen with things you have resistance around, you think are the bigger things. It happens all the time. And you relax after you put in your ask. You know, when you put in your ask, you know, Abraham talks a lot about that. Um, which uh, you know, I'm not. I'm just here to say that's one one teacher out there that talks about that. They ask, and so you put in your ask, and then it's received right away. As long as we're not resistant to it, is what I've learned. Like manifestation, if we're not in resistance, we ask. Like often, and it's magnetic to us. It's got to be our true desire. It's got to be truly our desire. But we ask, and if we don't have any resistance. Or we don't have, we, our resistance is quite low and the, the signal is strong and clear. Um, it's stronger or clearer than your resistance. And it'll manifest. It'll, the less resistance, the easier it'll manifest and the more joyful it'll be, more abundant the harvest. And so a lot of the teaching that we've been getting, you know, since the secret, right? Like there's been a lot of teaching. Um, that was years ago now, so long ago. But how can we layer on all the manifestation techniques to make it happen for me? And yet there's too little attention in my in my opinion, other than someone like Eckhart, who's a, a big mainstream teacher. But outside of that, there's too few people talking about uh, the greatest thing of all, which has really ultimately uh, in its purest sense has nothing to do with Traditionally, what we talk about with manifestation certainly uh, may not have anything to do with manifestation at all, depending on how you want to look at it. So what is the greatest thing of all? The greatest thing of all, 
lot of people try to put labels on that too. Well, the greatest thing of all is love. Well, no, love isn't the highest vibration. Joy is the light highest. Well, wait a minute. What if it could be bliss? Uh, oh, no, I've discovered something beyond bliss. Beyond bliss. That's what we're manifesting. And it always comes back to make it happen. We're going to make that happen. We're going to go beyond, beyond all that. And, and then, so it goes further and further. And then, uh... It's, 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 it's the mind that never feels safe or complete or adequate enough and always feels not good enough. That's why everybody says, oh, I feel unworthy. I don't feel good enough. That's your mind talking. So it was a kind of, uh, always whatever, whatever you achieve, whatever state of being you're even inhabiting, eventually it'll say, wow, but it could be better, right? So that's a, that mind that's it's never enough. It's never quite there. Uh, we're going to get there someday, though. Eventually, we're going to figure this thing out. Um, we're going to let it happen. There'll be this big cosmic boom inside of me or something like that, and I'll just explode into awakening, which people have experiences like that. So we're going to get there. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Oh, my God, but I'm so sick of it. I wish I could just not let it all go, right? It's getting very tiring. I would like to just, I would just like to let go. And then you let go. You let go. Chill out for a little while. And all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, I got bills to pay. I got, I got, I'm lonely. I'm, I got, I got, uh, I got to get in shape. I, I, I can't, I can't go around looking like this this summer. And uh, whatever the thing is, right? Like, oh wait, I'm gonna make that happen. I'm gonna make that happen. It's time to get going. And then. And then you get tired and you're like, oh, I just want to let it all go. I think I'll just have uh, have some desserts, you know, uh, just, yeah, just, you know, binge some on some Netflix, uh, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> you call it your guilty pleasure, maybe, or whatever it is. All right, yeah, maybe it's meditate too, you know, throw in some of that. I heard that's good for me. <laughs> um to do extra meditation, even even if you're a meditator already. And then it's like, okay. All right. But wait a minute. We got stuff to do, right? How, what, what should I be doing? I don't know. These experts here say I should be doing this. And that person says that. All right. Maybe I should be better. Okay. Let's do that. Okay. Wait a minute. No, let's do that. No, that's not important. No, I'm going to have to say no to that because this is even more important. And then we're all over the place, right? So... This is your life. I, I'm, I'm showing you, like, for, for, for many of you, some version of your life. You know, maybe not exactly, but, you know, along those lines. And it looks like my life sometimes, too, for sure. But what is the greatest thing about what takes us beyond all these different, this, this, these constant patterns that take over? And then, then we say, oh, now I want to relax. Um and I think some of us, it's uh, the deepest sense of relaxation is the idea that we'll leave our body someday, right? Well, eventually I'll leave my body and finally I'll be at peace, right? <laughs> so I won't be in my physical body. I won't be in my mind anymore. Thank God. But what if you could experience that level of peace, even close to that amount of peace that you perceive that you would have after you leave your body? now and that you could live in that space what if you could and what if it could be more like I, I don't have to make it happen but i just get to let it happen again more of that allowing energy always coming back to that allowing letting go surrendering into what about that i'm gonna make millions well what if you could just relax and surrender and then enjoy the the greatest thing of all, which is the presence itself. And then through ways known and unknown that the things that would delight you will happen anyway. So it was Jesus. Uh, of course, this reminder came to me from, I believe it was actually Eckhart through a video I was watching. And uh, it was, Jesus said something along the lines I didn't, I don't have the quote right in front of me, but he said, seek the kingdom first and the rest will be added on to you, right? So seek the kingdom of heaven first. Uh, and something about righteousness and whatever, you know, be, be righteous. In other words, be connected to that. Let the rest be added on to you. 
somehow we just got to how do we get the added on to you part like we just keep focusing on that um the mind does anyway how do we just get the added on to you part that's what i really need all this like peace and love and vibration of presence what's that doing for me <laughs> so our mind always has it backwards it's like our our brain our, our our or our ego or whatever you want to call it it's about that presence first. The greatest thing of all isn't the greatest thing of all. Was that, was that Whitney Houston? Did she say that? The greatest love of all, I guess is what she said, right? But we often think, well, it's just love, right? And as great as love is, that's, that's just one aspect of it, right? That's just, it's such a palpable feeling that we can have. So then we love to say it's all about love and learning or whatever we say, but yeah, there's something mysterious and about life. And the more I, I listened to to uh, a scientist talking on it, it doesn't matter whose show it was, it was on somebody's show. And he said, uh, some people say we'll never figure it all out. But I say, well, that's limiting. Maybe we could figure it all out. And I'm like, okay. And he gave other examples, like how we figured things out. People said were impossible to figure out. So we could possibly figure out everything, you know, as far as how reality works and what we're really in here and all that. And we'll figure it all out. But, you know, there is something called the unknown. And there is, within within the sense of that unknown field, there, there, there it literally is called unknown for a reason. The things that become so-called known often devolve back into being unknown, right? So for so many years, we figured out, for example, like because I lift weights, I'll say this. They figured out, well, if you put a lot of work in, you you, you really go to failure on your, your, your reps. or you, And then the same principle goes into the idea of business and achievement. You go as far and hard as you can. You always get better results. Well, now you have examples of people having businesses and adventures like Eckhart, or you have examples of people doing weight, weightlifting in new ways, and they're coming out with new studies and are saying, no, now we've learned that's all backwards. It's not true. There's literally studies now showing that want to prove because it interested the experimenter, in my opinion, Look, going to failure isn't actually all what it's cracked up to be. It actually makes you worse. But then there's all these people built up huge by going all out all the time at the same time. So, but you could even be better if you did. It's always the idea it could be better, right? And this could be better. That could be better. And you got studies, these studies, and the amount that we had a hundred million thousand people in this study and a hundred million, but no, we had 20 billion trillion in this study. So this best study is better than that study. But that was just observational study. Well, this was a real science study. And oh, but that was funded by the egg industry. But this is, you'll go nuts. This is why I say like science, the idea of science is, is wonderful. It's a wonderful faculty of the mind. To have science. It is a faculty of the mind. It is not a faculty, in my opinion, of the infinite. It is not a faculty of the infinite. So when people say follow the science on anything, I don't care what it is, follow the science on, uh, you know, whatever. I don't care. I'm not here to create debates on the, all the different topics. I'm just saying, if people say follow the science, I'm just coming from truth. Follow your guidance. Follow your truth. Science is a faculty of the mind. The greatest thing of all is the unknown. When we can embrace the sense of the unknown, knowing we really don't know a whole heck of a lot. Even when you know certain things, you, I know like this thing's going to happen today. I just got a vibe on it. And then when it happens, you go, I knew that, right? Uh, that happens, but how about all the things that you didn't know were going to happen? Um, all the things that happen and you just don't have that, uh, you come up with explanations, but if you're really tr truthful, you'll say you don't really know how something happened. Even when you use manifestation principles to bring you things, which isn't the greatest thing of all anyway, it's just, it's just, it's just horsing around to point you back into the greatest thing of all. Um, 
you can't, you know, you say you figured it out, but you don't really know what really was the element or the thing that brought the manifestation into fruition. We can say, well, we think this is how it works, this is how it seems to work. Seems pretty predictable, seems to work. Then somebody else will come along and say, yeah, but I did what felt like or seems like just the opposite. And I can prove now that this is more the truth. And everybody joins that school, right? It's like, it's like in the cartoons, right? Like somebody's got, got like, a, there was a SpongeBob cartoon once, like, the one joint, you know, had a, whatever. It's like you have two different restaurants. Just think of it that way. Like, oh, we got the greatest burger ever. And everybody's pouring into the thing. My God, this is the way to go. This burger, this manifestation technique. And, and all of a sudden people hear, oh, my God, people are doing it 10 times easier at the restaurant down the street. Whoa, let me get in there and eat those burgers. That's going to be greater for my manifestation. They all pile in there. Oh, this isn't it either. Oh, okay, there's another one. You keep going, you keep going. Before you know before you realize it's like then, then you're like oh i'm awakening i realize that's just all the beliefs of my mind uh what i believe will work okay wow okay what i believe can work and if it's without resistance then that works okay all right wait a minute now uh, wait a minute. I'm, i've manifested things being really resistant before so now that doesn't make sense to me right so it keeps going and going so i i and others will share general principles you know general principles about things but never will will i say again at least as i hope i don't slip on this but is like i can never really say ultimately like i really know anything you know i always say that now, i've said that to people and they just they just absolutely hate that when i say that sometimes you can't absolutely really know a whole heck of a lot of anything but i know i'm seeing you right now daniel i know something well, you know, I, I could even have you question anything, right? I'd have you question if that's even real. So, but this is the thing I say, I go on and on about all this stuff because you there's great freedom in letting go, surrendering, realizing I don't really know much of anything. And when I do that and I allow myself to feel the presence, I just allow myself to feel that presence. Yes, I'm doing this for a reason, like that feeling of that higher dimensions flowing into our energy through our chakras and you know again this is just symbolic let's say that's not even real but that doesn't matter we're just trying to point into the thing itself everything's just pointing into the thing itself so tuning in so i will use concepts to help with that tuning into the so-called higher dimensions right allowing that to pour through our energy and what are we really doing? We're just putting our awareness on what's already there. It was already there. We release our tension and our struggle. Ah, we can feel something far greater. We just feel the sense of peace and spaciousness and timelessness. And then we're free. The freedom we're saying we need, we could achieve by leaving our bodies, which was so many light workers say, I'll get to that point often are saying those things, those types of, oh, I just want to get out of my body, basically. But what if you can just experience that now? Heaven on earth, heaven on earth can be for you. It's available potentially for everybody, potentially, right? It's a potential at least. We don't have to get there. We don't have to make it happen. All that, that insanity that goes on for us. No, we don't need any of that, but it's available for us it's available for each of us to experience that and yeah we may experience other things and that's fine but we can experience that more consistently how can we do that by letting go it's not in just manifesting just trying to make sales in your business just trying to get your marketing right just trying to get your sales right even though i help with all those things right i support all of those things i'm saying the first if you don't know the first thing then, and the most important thing, then everything else starts to slip. Everything else starts to slip. Everything else doesn't add up. But when you remember the main thing, everything else becomes your amusement. Everything else becomes much more playful, much more... Um, a flow and ease. 
get into a flow and an ease with all of life. How can you do it? Well, all right, let's hardcore meditate right now. We're going to let all of it go. There's already a, a, a sort of tension when we come into it like that, right? But when we allow ourselves just to feel the sense of our energy and our presence and we open up our window. If you were to open up your window right now and there's nature nearby, and just feel that breeze coming in if there's a breeze and and you just feel the sense of nature outside, even where you are right now. You just feel that presence. Do you hear the birds chirping? And you feel that sweetness. You feel the sense of just connection or beauty. Whatever words, you know, come to your mind don't matter, but just that, that feeling sense that you have and you feel the sense of connection and mystery, the sense of mystery, the, the delight of not knowing, the delight, the embrace of I don't know anything. I just sense something that's so magnificent. And I just want to, I just want to keep, keep in that sense. I want to keep in that sense, in that connection. And then everything can delight you. When you start with that initial connection, how everything can delight you. Someone could be bulldozing your house even. I had to cancel that thought. I don't, I don't, I don't need that experience. <laughs> but somebody could be bulldozing <laughs> your house or your place of dwelling. They're almost like about running you over. And you just be like, oh, the connection is so good. Oh, this is so delightful. This bulldozer is coming through my house. And it sounds funny, but it's true. You would literally, literally, that's how you would experience it. How do I know? Because I've experienced these things. I've experienced not that exact scenario, but scenarios just like that. When I'm in that connected state, everything delights you. Everything delights you. Well, that's sick. You know, the news keeps saying we should be mad about so many things. Social justice, the war on Ukraine, and this and that, all these different things, and the economy especially, <laughs> or whatever it is, um, depending on the news outlet, I guess. But whatever it is you're supposed to be angry about, what if you're not supposed to be angry about it? What if, what if there's no supposed to in it? What if we reach, su surrender all that? What if we allow ourselves? No. First thing's the first thing, period. Even if I was in that scene, even if I was in those scenarios, as long as I was able to, you know, perceive the sense of connection, that's still the first thing. You know, if you're starving to death, now that might be a different story, right? There may be certain scenes, it's possible that maybe it doesn't seem like that's the first thing anymore. You know, the first thing is, I need to eat something, you know? Um, but for most of us on the planet, and certainly you, first thing is that connection. Even in intense suffering, it's still that. And I would say most, even very intense suffering, still that. I feel that's available even for, for potentially even the star starving people in the world. Like, I don't know. I, I'm not going to say I know. I'm not in their, their condition at all. But everything, most scenarios, 100% always available, if not all of them. I would say all of them because I know source is always there and always available to us. So when you say, well, how in the world are things ever going to change for my business? How are things ever going to really change in a way that feels good to me? I don't have to be that salesperson in the way that I think maybe I'm supposed to be. And I'm like, how are things going to change? It's going to change first by surrendering to this presence. Knowing you don't know. You don't even know. Even those master marketers and salespeople out there, including you know, myself, not to say I'm a total master of all those, a total master of anything, but... I don't know how I do it. I can explain it to you. Everybody will say, boy, you're really good at that. Boy, you're so knowledgeable. But why don't I talk about it more? Maybe I will in the future, but it's because I know the first thing is this, is the connection. It's 
the connection. The mag magnetic resonant feel that we feel the infinite heaven on earth. Knowing everything is already in its fullness. We, we say that. We, many of us have said these words so many times before. We've known these truths. But then we don't allow ourselves to feel the connection. We know everything else. All these other ideas. Like you go into the Tower of Babel, right? Well, I don't know about fullness. Well, I'm a little short right now. <laughs> Yet in this field, everything's full all the time. So then... People are like, okay, but how do we harness all that and put it into the physical? That's what I'm talking about. Okay. I mean, yet it's going to be added on to you with less resistance and fear and with a sense of joy and fulfillment, it will be added on to you easily. The timing, you know, how, that's not our, not our, not, it's not necessarily our business. Uh, if at all, right? Not necessarily our business. Depends. Sometimes maybe there's something there for the mind to focus on. On the how. That's possible, right? So there's no dogma here. It's just whatever's true. So the greatest thing of all is always that we're in our fullness. And if we allow ourselves to reconnect with that and be with that, everything's possible. And Yes, I am. I have my eyes closed throughout because it allows me to concentrate in a way in our focus on the presence. Sometimes when I open my eyes, it starts to leave a little bit, just a little bit. Just want to stay centered, right? Because our eyes, our eyes, and my concern about what I'm seeing and everything could maybe throw me here or there. It's about maintaining that presence, a connection. I always wonder when I have my eyes closed, my mind would be is fearful sometimes. Oh my God, everybody's seeing my eyes closed. Maybe they'll all want to leave. Maybe no one's going to want to stay. <laughs> I, like, it's though it matters. You know, it doesn't matter. It actually doesn't even matter, even though I love you all. I will love, I love connecting. I love, I love it. My mind loves to see lots of people here or whatever number of people here. It doesn't even matter, you guys. The greatest thing of all is right here. It doesn't matter. It's right here. And it just so happens again, I love the way Eckhart shares about it, is when you offer no resistance to life, he talks about. When you're in this presence and therefore offering no resistance to life, I'm kind of reframing what he's saying a little bit to make it clearer, but when you're in this connection, offering no resistance to life, you're surrendered. Then yeah, I mean that. Then you're in what the only thing that really matters ultimately, and then everything kind of plays itself out from that vibration, that energy. It's going to be amazing. It's going to tend to give you so much more bounty on all the things your mind says it needs or wants anyway. And that's just the way it works. So that's why I'm offering this retreat. By the way, again, I'll mention it is offer the retreat because it delights me to offer it. Not because I'm thinking in my head, this is the best money maker possible. It's because it delights me to offer it. It delights me to offer it. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Surrender to what my truth is, is to offer the retreat. Uh, and again, I, I offered the link before I pop it in again, right? Uh, okay. So yeah, retreat at the end of the week and just so you can connect into that, into this, to the greatest thing of all, experience its mysteries, its wonders. Because it will reveal things. It will awaken things within you. And you'll have a, it will help you with your direction in your life and in your purpose in profound ways is, is what I'm sensing for you. Okay? That's just what I'm sensing. I just, I always tell people, I'm just, Channeling things, of tune, just tuning in. I'm just telling you what I'm getting. I don't know. What do I know? It's just what I'm getting. So what's possible when you get just a little more still and get a little deeper into this energy?
So today what I was getting to do outside of doing the usual talking I do in the beginning was also to offer some overall channeled messages that are coming through overall. And there's some source or specific being energies, you know, I look at all the beings as energy frequencies and coming from those frequencies, sharing whatever wants to come through. Um, I'm always open to your questions and comments and I just don't see any so far, but, and then if you, you want any, if you want energy scanning today, I'm happy to offer you some energy scanning. Um, hmm. Tune into that for a second. Yeah. And even more than energy scanning, I would love to share some channeled, channeled messages and prayer for you today. That just keeps coming through. Um, yeah. Yeah. Feeling that freedom, right? Just, just letting go. Nowhere to run to. Nothing to be. Nothing to make happen. What if you stayed in that state? What if you never left that state? Because there is a natural connection that will will guide you, will lead you in to moving in the world anyway. Your enlightened mind will figure something out in a sense anyway. It'll, it actually is more like it just occurs to you. Oh, I guess we're going to do this, right? It just comes to you. Just offering possibilities. What if you can allow yourself to live in that perpetual state? Knowing again, yeah, concepts and confusion, contractions may still come up, but the overall flow of your life is in this connection. Things are happening in a sense that are totally natural. And that you're living your truth, because there are some specific frequencies within you that want to come out and play. I just was interviewed by somebody. We've got an energy scan training coming up soon again. And I was being interviewed for it, and I was, I was just being me. I was just being connected, having fun, just being me. And yet, the person interviewing me, who knows me really well, says... Oh, you see all his fire and, you know, he's, man, he's just boom, boom, boom and all this stuff. And it's like, so that's the perception that she's having of me. It may not, maybe it's just her perception. Maybe others don't see it that way. Maybe people do. Does it, but my point is, again, we have a lot of concepts our mind gets into. What does all this living in this energy mean? And it doesn't mean anything other than to feel that sense. And then what comes through you, comes through you. Again, it might be like a soft breeze sometimes of energy coming through your voice and your energy. And other times it could be quite different. So it is what it is. It's and more, But the more you embrace the thing itself, the greatest thing of all, the, the presence itself, it will bring you into natural harmony and rhythm with who you truly are and letting that play out in all its forms and varieties. And we're meant to enjoy that. But we start with the foundation. And that's why I recommend the retreat, even if you can't make every single day on every single segment. Um, if you're called to it, all the same, then to uh, join us. So anyway, so you've got the link. Like I said, it's later this week. So um, act, supplies are limited or... <laughs> Jesus. Just, yeah, if you're called to it, join. Okay. Yeah. The deeper space calls to you. All right. Okay, so, all right, was there any comments? Jeez, I don't see any. I'm going to double check on my computer, see if there's been anything coming through, if there's any energy scan requests of any sort. Then I do want to give you some channel messages. Um... 
Okay, here now I see him. See, I knew there were some messages. Lois says, being present and connected feels so good. I'm working on being in that state more often, but without trying, right? Yep, exactly. I mean, that's it. That's everything. Yeah, without trying in a sense, but sometimes until it becomes just automatically more embodied, it's like, even for myself, I have to, uh, the density comes in and all of a sudden we're lost again. So it's like, we have to take some time to feel that energy coming in, maybe taking your hands and moving down through your body and feeling that energy, whatever helps you, you know, harnessing in a meditation, etc. Unfortunately, I may not be able to see all your comments based on, again, the way this is set up here for me. Always fun to listen to you. Douglas, good to have you here. Um, got an energy scan request from Melanie. Um, yes, uh, what's Lois and you were saying? Okay. Um, it says 12 comments, but it's not allowing me to see them all right now. So apologize for that. Whatever you've been saying, thanks. I will read them all later for a hundred percent. If there's something you really want me to see, if you feel free to copy and paste it again, because for whatever reason, I can only see the ones at the very, the very last ones that are um, put here. Okay. Well, I do see the energy scan request here from, from Melanie and um, let's do a little tuning in then. Okay, I'm just going to share it the way it's coming through. Um, know God and know the truth. So again, when I'm scanning one person, I'm scanning all of you guys in a way, right? There's at least there's something in it for all of you when I get something from one of you. So you've got no God and no truth. Now that's the simplest thing, right? No God and no the truth. It's the simplest thing. It's only when we say, but I don't know what that means. I got to figure it all out. That's when we're lost. But the part of you that already understands that at a non-thinking level, already can feel that and sense that and knows that, comes into peace and alignment right away. Of course. Know God and know the truth. They're showing me with your hands moving, doing things, and it's like, this is not what's going to produce the results, you know? There's only so much of that that's really needed. I'm getting a sense of fasting from some of this blah, 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 get it done activity and participating in what's being offered today. Let this natural flow guide you. Let your projects take a fraction of the time because you're let, letting go so much that you can get right to the point so easily in any activity because you're in such a connection. Way more efficient. I see sort of question marks around the third eye, crown area. The question seems to be something like, am I special? Am I anointed or something like that? And it's, you know, one of the things I had to come to know for myself, this is reminding me of myself when I was starting trying to get my business going was, I was like, and just trusting myself as a, got you know a, a guide of spirit and spiritual teacher etc and I, I always felt like am i am i really like ready for this am i i don't know how to explain it but like am i really like have i been initiated properly or i what do i need to like finally just be it and i came to realize i just it was just about me saying yes to it. Like, I just needed to anoint myself in that case. You know, like for me, that's all that, you know, that's all the, you know, people could be, give you a, 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 a blessing and I mean, it's beautiful. But ultimately, you're giving it to yourself in a sense by allowing the blessing of who you are simply to be received and then share with the world. So, no, you, 
No, you're, you're already an initiated. You're already blessed. You're already ready for this next step. You're already ready for the next steps you perceive. You're capable of sharing and delivering today. You know, all you have to do is just say yes. Anoint yourself. Remember, you are you are you are a master of of your spiritual gifts already at one level, and and you experience yourself that way if you trust it. Now, sometimes you know, so you move through some of your density. Maybe you feel a little lost at moments, but the only way through that is to keep knowing the master you are, and keep showing up, sharing your gifts. I am that master already, coming from that space. And then you'll see when you act as though you're a master already, you're already a spiritual master already. Even if you want to get into the manifest, say, okay, I'm already a manifestation master. I'm already, or whatever it is, I'm already that. And all you have to do is act accordingly. Act from that energy, and you'll experience yourself in that way, right away. Not later, but right away. And then if your brain, part of your being comes up, oh, I don't know about all that, then that moment, maybe you slip, and all of a sudden you don't think you are that anymore. But it doesn't, doesn't mean you aren't. It just means now you believe something else. Now you're being distracted from who you really are. So it's just a matter of like, no, I'm already that. I'm going to act from that place. I'm already a successful business owner. I'm already whatever. Coming from that space. You got it backwards. Okay, if I do X, Y, Z and figure this thing out, finally I'll be successful and I'll be a spiritual master or whatever it is you want to become. Then I'll become it. No. Nope. That's the hard way to do it. That's the long way. That 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 for some of you it'll seem like it's impossible. You do it from the other way, then it's easy. And you can become that. You can be that now. And will your radiance and presence and sense of power from that place, so to speak, grow to some degree or a lot? Maybe, maybe it become more embodied for sure. It starts from I'm already that. Okay. All right. Thanks for that. Uh, thanks so much, Melanie. That was helpful, I think, for all of us. Um, that there is. Okay. Um, thank you, Douglas. I know what you're saying. And then uh, Janet. Um, channel message for me. How to prepare for retreat feel so defeated that the V mandates are not lifted. Okay. Hmm. I'll bring that to retreat, to surrender, and to, to sh shift through. Okay. All right. So, yeah, you know, there are, there's so many conditions. These days they seem more fearful than ever, right? Like everything... Whether it's uh, we're concerned about V mandates, um, we have issue, we have the, the real, uh, it's real, but it's real, but it's real, and I get it, I understand what you're saying. Um, whatever it is, it's real, it's real, it's real, and you could point to all the evidence, and you could say literally, uh, I'm being affected. These people are being affected. Everybody's being affected. We're locked down. We're this. We're that. We're the other. And then that story perpetuates, right? I'm just going to remind you guys. Then the story perpetuates, and then you know, maybe it seems like it's better, then it's worse again. And But once you're able to let go, once you're getting in, into that heaven on earth energy, and come in with that intention and to retreat, Janet, um, see the wonders and the miracles and the blessings that can flow from that. And embrace from your heart of any mandate that the mind, the collective mind, the collective consciousness, even may give to any and all of us. 
ah, ah. Like the fear comes up, the tension. But the heart, when you bring the heart into it, you feel like, oh, there's this mandate. I'm going to put my heart around it. I don't want to do that. It's going to make it manifest even more. That's not true. What serves the highest will manifest when you put your heart around it. Okay. But, okay, that it will, you bring it into your sacred heart. Love it with your, embrace it with your sacred heart, whatever the challenge is. Just like, then feel like a sweet breeze flowing through you. It's like, feel like a sweet breeze. You know what a breeze feels like? So you hold it in your heart. You don't have to think anything. All you have to do is just presence the feeling of the, those mandates in your sacred heart. Words make emerge, that's fine. Might feel even empowering. When I feel into that, I just get, I love them all. I love them all. Whatever it is, you know, I'm not even labeling that. I'm just saying, like, those are the words that come through. I love them all. All are seeking love, and love is seeking you. So I love them all. Watch magic unfold from this space. As Jesus said, these things and greater you, you shall do. Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven is within, right? All things will be added on to us, right? Once we are connected. But when we feel the sense of fear in our mind, we're not connected. So we bring the, the sense of the fear into the sacred heart. Allow, allow that energy to be transmuted just naturally. We're not trying to manipulate it. It naturally will be transmuted. We feel the sense of love for all. And we feel the sense of magic and childlike wonder. And then we don't even give an idea to that, but like it's just a feeling. We're just giving words to a feeling. Then you feel magical. You feel like, you know what? I'm safe. You know what? Things are quickly resolving in this area of my life. And you're not trying to make it happen. You're just declaring what you sense to be true. You don't even have to buy it. It doesn't... Let me see the evidence. Let's see if it worked, you know, and then let's backward engineer this thing. How did this thing work? No, we're just, oh, things are quickly resolving here. Okay, so it is. Right? And just go about, go about your business and enjoy the perpetual presence, the, the greatest thing of all. And when your friend fear comes back, you just, you know, can repeat the process. You know, of course, this is one of many processes you could use, but just the one that's channeling, it is channeling for me to give to you. You have not been abandoned. Source sees you for who you are. You are that eternal child of God. Wanting to share your love and blessings with everyone you encounter. And you give them roses. If you get a kick in the teeth, you love them still. Of course, it's been said many times, they know not what they do. And yet you demonstrate your love and your truth for all the world to see. Come back home and never feel abandoned again. Thank you. That was from Master Jesus. That was specifically for you, Janet, and certainly it 
always, like I said, all these individual messages are for everyone as well. Let me see. I'm like, okay, I better get the next messages because they're streaming down here. And if I don't, okay, let's see. Um, Melanie says she's going to add new mantra. Yes, I'm already a spiritual master, a successful business owner. Perfect. Who supports me? Uh, supports people in transformation. There is an abundance of client uh, clients and wealth. Yes. Uh, Lisa says only caught part of it today, but I love this message. Always feel better with renewed perspective after listening to you. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Let's see if there's anything. Yeah. I just keep hearing now. Come to the retreat. Come to retreat. Let's enjoy some more. I'll put, put the link in again for you. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Somebody, one of my friends said that I would make a good carnival barker if I wanted to when I get into that energy, right? <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know if I could do it if I try to make it happen. So uh, us channels, if we try to make it happen, well, it could be a disaster, right? So... But when we, when we allow ourselves to let it come naturally, then that's where the brilliance is. Starve yourself no more for the spirit of all substance is within you eternally. Feast upon that which is most real within you and never be hungry again. Communicate your blessings to all that are willing to show up for what you have to share. When you're in this grace, the right ones present themselves. Let it be so easy. Thank you. All right, that's Archangel Gabriel sharing with us today. Thank you. Hmm. I need to watch the time a little bit. Oops. Wow. Time's been flying while we're having fun. Well, we've got a couple of, at least a couple of channeled messages in there. Um, yeah. So let's see if there's any more comments. Let's go ahead. I need to start wrapping it up. Uh, let's go ahead and do a channel prayer. Again, for those of you already signed up for the retreat, looking forward to being with you. I've been so, I've been, uh, I'm just so grateful and uh, grateful for for everything. So let's just do the uh, prayer now. So take a nice deep breath then. In through your nose, up through your crown track, up through your higher self, up to love, light, source, energy, up into the all and all. And as you exhale through your mouth, shoo, let this energy come back down through your higher self, down through your crown chakra, down through all your chakras, through your physical body, through your auric field, down through your feet, down through your root chakra, down to the core of the earth. As I speak these words and the I am for everyone to listen to my voice and recognize God, love, life, source, spirit is all there is. I'm grateful that life is triumphantly one with, with source <laughs> with all aspects of my life. And when I allow myself to reorder my life from this depth of presence, that is the greatest thing of all that I experience. My life is amazing. And I'm grateful to be in perpetual gratitude for the love that I am, the, the, the power that I am, the intelligence that I am, that I am that simply because I am one with source. And I'm grateful for the unique frequency and blessings that have been given to me in my life, for, for everything is here calling for me to love it, for me to be experience love and to deepen in love and presence and all, all these different, in so many ways, in so many ways. Bring me back to the one. And I'm grateful for that. I let go of any resentment that I, that, I, that I have a sense of separation at times. But yet I give thanks for the rocket ship of my desires in the contrast that happens when I'm in the contraction. Knowing that it's part of my divine design to experience that. And knowing that it's here to bring me back home. Back home to allow myself to experience the frequency of of wholeness, joy, and success, and fulfillment in so many different ways from living from this eternal space within and, and embracing all of who I am, what I've come here to bring and to share and to bless. 
as I let this be so, I'm so grateful to let go into it, letting go of the density of, of the sense of my mind and the ego and allowing the sense of the, the presence within to, to hold me and to allow all to become so simplified, amazing and magical, allow myself to be entertained by, by the musings of the mind and the ego and, and by the collective ego. So as I do so, I'm, I bless and love all and let all great things unfold from there and rock on with my purpose, my business, the impact, the sense of impact or blessings I want to bring forth into the world, knowing they're infinite from this space and let it be well and let it be so. Thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. Okay. All right, everybody, so happy to have been with you today. Uh, we'll have another amazing Facebook Live again next week at 3 p.m. Central. So definitely join me then. Don't know what I'll be talking about yet next week, but look forward to being with you. Lots of love and blessings to you all, and goodbye for now.